Okay, so the first question that we're going to look at here is a projectile motion question. So it says that we've got a ball is thrown at an angle of 25 degrees above the ground with an initial velocity of 18 meters per second. And how far away does it land? I always like to start pretty much every question with a little diagram. So we've got a ball traveling at 18.0 meters per second, and it is at 25 degrees above the ground. So the first thing to remember when you're doing projectile motion questions is of course to split everything up into the x direction and the y direction. And so in the x direction, um, in this case, we've got uniform motion in the x direction. There is no acceleration in the x direction um, because we're discounting friction here, air friction. That means we can go back to sort of the most basic of kinematics equations. V is equal to d over t, or uh, velocity is equal to displacement over time. Unfortunately, in the y direction, we do have acceleration. We call this accelerated motion. So we can't use the simple equation. And um, we have to use something a little bit more complicated um, because of gravity. So what information do we know? Well, all we're told is the initial speed and direction, but we're gonna break this into components. So part of this initial speed is moving in the x direction, part of it is moving in the y direction. If this is 18.0, then this side down here is going to be 18.0 multiplied by cosine of 25. Because it's cosine, soka toa, it's adjacent over hypotenuse, we're on the adjacent side here. And so, we're going to call this part Vx is equal to 18 cosine 25. Our other variables that we're going to have in the x direction are dx, this is what we're trying to find, and t. And t is special with projectile motion questions, and we'll get into that in a second. So the vertical component of this velocity is going to be 18 sine 25 and so we'll call that vi because it's the initial velocity and it's the initial velocity in the y direction and that's going to be 18 sine 25 which if you work that out that gives you uh, what is it? 7.60713 meters per second. We want to make sure we're keeping all of our decimals so that uh, when we don't run into any issues with rounding later on. Okay, notice over here, um, we don't have a, uh, over here on the x side, we don't have a vi and a vf because there's no acceleration, so vi and the vf are the same. Okay, the other variables that we often run into with these kinematics equations are Vf in the x direction, uh, acceleration, sorry, in the y direction, acceleration in the y direction, uh, displacement in the y direction, and time. Now, remember time is special with these projectile motion questions because it's going to be the same in the x and the y direction. So the time at which it hits the ground in the y direction is going to be the same as the time it hits the ground in the x direction. So kind of what we're going to do here is starting with the y, we're going to figure out how long does it take to hit the ground, and then we're going to move back over to the x side and figure out how far it's gone. So what else do we know? Well, we know the acceleration in the y direction is negative 9.81 meters per second squared. So we're assuming we're on Earth. Um, there's two other things that we know. And so anytime we're doing this type of question, we're going to need three out of four variables in order to use one of the equations. So t is going to be our unknown. We know vi. We know a. We know acceleration. So we need to either figure out what 
vf or dy is. I'm looking at the question, they don't explicitly tell us what they are, so we have to think about this a little bit. So there's two ways we could think about this. One way we could do is we could say, okay, when we're assuming that this object, this ball is being thrown off of the ground, and so when it hits the ground again, its total distance in the y direction is gonna be zero meters. So that's one way we could do it. Um, if you do that, you're gonna end up with a little bit of a trickier calculation later on. So what I'm gonna do instead is I'm gonna think about what my final velocity is. And anytime you throw something up in the air, when it returns to the same height that it started at, it's going to have the same speed just in the opposite direction because we're not accounting for friction or anything. So the speed here is actually just going to be negative 7.60713 meters per second. So it's going to be going down instead of up. And uh, conservation of energy I would tell us the same thing here because that energy uh, it was not lost because we're at the same height, so the amount of kinetic energy should be the same. So we need to figure out which equation has a vi, vf, a, and t in it. And this is a bit of a tricky one because the vi and vf are hidden in the delta v. And so this is actually vf minus vi, final minus initial velocity divided by time. So we can rearrange this to get time is equal to vf minus vi divided by the acceleration. So this is negative 7.607 minus 7.607. We also could have just multiplied it by 2. Divided by negative 9.81 meters per second squared. Here, of course, we're in meters per second. And we get a total time of 1.55 seconds. And of course, like I mentioned earlier, this time is going to be the same time that it takes to travel horizontally. So we're almost done here. We had V is equal to D over T. Speed is equal to distance over time. If we're looking for our distance, well, we just have to multiply speed by time. If we're talking about the x direction, well, we can put the little subscripts in. And so v in the x direction we said was 18 cosine 25 multiplied by t, which was 1.55 seconds. And we end up with a distance that they traveled of 25.3 meters. And that would be our final answer there. Uh, so remember, for any time you're doing a projectile motion question, you will almost always be breaking it into the two components, into x and y. And generally, you'll use the y to figure out the amount of time that something is in the air. And then you'll use the x direction to figure out how far something has gone. Um, sometimes you would go backwards where you use the x to find the time and you use y to find the answer. It just depends on what the question is asking you.